Hey everybody, Brayden here, and welcome back to another tournament game analysis. This is of the Golden Horseshoe, and it's round number three. Right now, I am two out of two, which is awesome, and I am now playing against Victor, and I'm hoping to go three out of three if I can. I feel like I'm on really good form so far this tournament. Uh, let's see how this one goes, though. E4, and I play C5, Knight F3, D6, D4, takes, takes, Knight F6, Knight C3, and we see... My classical Sicilian. Uh, this is the second time I'm able to play it, which is awesome. Uh, we see bishop c4. I play the move queen to b6 here. Knight to b3. e6. Castles. Bishop to e7. And a4. So here I go queen c7 uh, first. And the whole point is, let's just say, for example, knight to b5. We're not actually too, too worried about this. We, we can just go queen b8. Uh, this is kind of a common... Sicilian idea here where we're just going to go a6 at some point uh, and although you know they get a lot of uh, pressure against the pawn it's actually just not enough so very lucky of us uh, just everything's still safe here uh, and that's how that's exactly what happened in the game funnily enough uh, so rook to e1 I played bishop d7 uh, so it could eye the the knight at some point as well but it's also just focused on development where I'm not quite castling yet uh, because I just wanted to wait a little bit. They played bishop f4, and then I played the move knight to e5, uh, and this is what I mean. So if they add another attacker, some may think that e5 is the move, but after e5, it weakens the d5 square considerably, so instead, the move knight e5 is just better to play. Because after takes and takes, uh, even though we have doubled pawns here, we actually control a lot of central space, with these pawns, and there's nothing to really worry about. Uh, this is not a weakness. Our queen is covering that square. Our bishop now, since we have more room in the position, we can bring it to c6 to attack their, their pawn, play a6 and b5 at some point if we need to. Uh, it's just an equal game. So instead, after knight e5, they played bishop to f1 because they didn't want to take on e5. They decided to uh, move the bishop. I played bishop c6. Um which honestly, I'm not too sure how I feel about it. I think maybe a6 was smarter. Uh, bishop c6 is kind of silly because it just runs into some knight d4s against the bishop. Um, so yeah, a6 is, is definitely my preferred move now. Uh, and followed by some sort of move like castling, maybe rook c8. And uh, I still have lots of play here. Um, but yeah, I, okay, I play bishop c6. They play f3. And then I play b6, um, which I also don't think is correct. Uh, I think the whole point of b6 was I was going for a hedgehog structure with a6 after. Uh, but after knight 5 d4, which is what they played, and I have to play bishop d7 and bishop e5, I have a lot of weak light squares. And this was like way back, I think it was one of the first games I played where I was on the white side of a position where my opponent played an early b6. Obviously, it was much more different circumstances, but uh, it was kind of the same concept where my light squares got weak, or their, my opponent's light squares got weak on that game, and they just got crushed, and um, I just weakened my light squares, not really for a good enough reason, honestly, uh, and now it feels like I'm slightly worse. So, I played a6, forcing a trade on d7, they took, I took back, and then they took on e5 here. So I spent a lot of time calculating because I wasn't exactly sure what to make of this position. Um, I could take with the knight, and taking with the knight looked pretty good. Um, for example, if uh, knight takes f4, knight c4, knight c6, queen c7 is something I was looking at. Uh, but I couldn't make out exactly uh, what was going on in a position like this with queen d4. Uh, if I were to play a move like f6 or not, uh, I couldn't fully evaluate it or calculate it deep enough at the time so i ended up not going for that although i do think that is a reasonable way to play even though the king kind of looks funny on, on e7 uh i end up taking with the pawn here because i saw a funny looking line uh that i thought ended in equality so it's a bit of a longer calculation, but also not really. It's it's pretty forcing, uh, but I do think it ended up well for me and everything was fine. So knight c6, 
And the idea is queen d6. So they have to trade queens here because, or like, they don't have to trade queens. They can take on e7, but then I have to trade queens. Uh, but luckily, everything just barely works out in my favor. Queen takes d6. Bishop takes d6. Uh, if they were to take on e7 instead, or if they were to just like do some other move, obviously, I'd just take their knight. Uh, but if they take on e7, uh, then I can um, take on d1. Let's just say rook a takes, uh, takes, and I can just play rook hd1, and then some sort of like either knight c5 or, or knight f8, and I don't really see too much of a problem here uh, for us. But okay, queen d6, they ended up trading, and then they play rook ad1, which is what I had to calculate, because they're able to double up very quickly with rook d2 and the other rook to d1, and my knight on d7 feels a little misplaced. I played bishop c7, they played rook d2, uh, and now they're going to play rook d1, and if I play a silly move here, I let's just say h5, rook d1, this is very bad, uh, because they're just getting on the 7th rank, and there's nothing I can do about it. So... That is something definitely to worry about. Uh, so I, I saw a funny move here and I went for it because this is what I calculated when I played D takes E5. That's the move knight B8. Uh, knight B8 looks stupid because I'm undeveloping a piece, but uh, if I can get this trade in and then something like rook D1, I can play rook D8 and equalize what they have on the D file. If they take, I just take back. Then I can follow up with king to e7, king to c7, and then the other rook to d8 here. At least that was my idea. Uh, so here, um, my opponent played knight b4, not trading, uh, just trying to keep pieces on, which is what I expected. But then I saw that I have moves like a5 or king e7, which is what I ended up playing. They played rook e d1, and I am just one tempo in time to play the move... Uh, rook to d8 here because of course if i if i do play a different move in this position let's say h5 then again i run into problems and this time it's knight c6 check where uh i i it's hard to find a move if i move back then rook d8 will checkmate me and if i take then rook d7 check uh that will pick up the the bishop and they get the seventh rank again uh, and it's clear that black is hoping for a draw at that point but rook d8 uh, equalizes everything, so I was pretty happy about that. Knight to d2, b5 to prevent knight c4, uh, and also allow bishop to b6 check. Knight c6, and now all my pieces are out. I can play rook d1, or maybe uh, if the a-file opens, which it does, uh, then my per rook is perfectly placed. So now there's not really much to worry about it anymore. Um, there's one weakness in the position, um, potentially, which is the e5 pawn, but... After some sort of f6, uh, it's no longer that weak. But uh, c3 was played. I ended up playing f5, trying to go for more activity. Of course, takes takes would be a tremendous error on my opponent's part. That was not played because now I, it's undoubled and I have a lot of central space. So nothing um, too shabby there. So f5, uh, king e2, rook to a4, uh, and there, it was just to prevent them from being able to uh, do anything for themselves. Let's just say a silly move like knight b1 or knight b3 or knight f1. Of course, we do win the the e4 pawn, um, even though it's not the healthiest extra pawn, uh, one of these ones. But that was kind of the, the idea there is uh, now they can't move their d knight. And also, it's just a slightly more active rook. Maybe I go for b3 at some point. Uh, maybe I don't. So they played h3, I played g6 just to maintain tension uh, and also keep everything overprotected. They played g4 now, uh, and I ended up playing rook to a2. Rook to b1, king to f6, knight to c1, rook to a7, uh, b4, um, which felt wrong because it feels like what they want to do is some sort of uh, b3 c4 or trying to target this pawn somehow it's just difficult to find a way to target it properly uh, but going for some sort of pawn break feels like a good idea for them in the future if they can somehow get it uh, but yeah so i brought the rook back um i play king g5 and i noticed that i get a ton of activity here which i was pretty happy about 
uh, I was considering moves like bishop to e3, uh, which I did play to see if I can end up taking on, on d2. Um, but unfortunately, here I just couldn't calculate it being worth anything at all. Uh, I also looked at moves like rook a1, but of course, knight to b3 uh, is something to consider. Of course, not immediately. Uh, this knight is actually better to go to b3, because if this knight... Uh, goes to, to b3 here, uh, there's rook takes on, on c1. But uh, the other, yeah, so I was just looking at this variation with uh, rook a1, uh, this knight going there, uh, and then this check, king h2, and some sort of move like, like rook e1 uh, or something, and I just didn't really make anything out of it. Uh, so I played rook a3 instead, um, but they play knight e2 now, rook to a7, Knight to b3, f takes e4, f takes e4. And I'm not sure exactly how I feel about f takes e4 here. So instead, a move like h5 makes a little bit more sense. Uh, because after h5, well, I'm trying to just win a pawn here, and it almost feels like it forces white to make up their mind. Do they want to take here? Uh, where all of a sudden, now my rook can get in uh, through g7. Or do they want to take here, fix my structure, uh, and maybe maybe allow some sort of break in the future, uh, which could be very, very deadly. So I think f takes e4 was just incorrect, because now it doesn't give me any chance to fix these pawns uh, and fix my pawn, st pawn structure, which is unfortunate. Um, I had what I thought was a critical idea in mind, which was knight d8, bringing the knight to g5 and trying to win this pawn. But it just didn't work out. Uh, my opponent played knight c5. I played rook to c7, uh, threatening to take on c5 now. Knight to d3. Knight to f7. Rook to a2. And now knight to g5. If they were to take here, um, unfortunately, uh, I don't believe I can take on e4 because of knight f3 checkmate. Uh, so... So I'm not really um, too happy about that. If, if knight takes, then um, I'd have to find another another move here, I think. Um, what was I considering here in this position? What was I considering? Uh, hmm. Maybe it was rook to a7 or rook to b7, but as far as I'm concerned, this knight takes e5 is very annoying. Uh, no, my apologies. Knight takes h3 is what I was considering, not knight takes e4. Uh, we're after knight f3 check. Now we can take uh, on g4. That was very silly of me because, of course, knight takes e4 would be a huge mistake. Knight f3 is checkmate. Um, okay. So, yeah, that was the variation I was, I was looking for. After knight g5, rook a1 was played. I played rook c4, again going for the e4 uh, pawn here. Knight takes e5. Uh, I ended up taking on e4 here. So one thing to worry about is, for example, it might look like, oh, yay, the pawn is hanging. But after rook h1, we're a little sad. And by a little sad, I mean a lot sad because we do lose uh, an important piece there. And it's the same concept here. Uh, obviously, our rook is attacked, so we have to deal with that. And any h3s are just not possible. I took on e4. Knight f3 check. Knight takes f3. King takes f3. And rook e5. Um, and now it just feels like I'm trying to hold on for the draw at this point. My opponent played extremely well. Uh, I feel like I had a little bit of pull uh, somewhere in this endgame, especially since my king was so far advanced. I knew that if I played king h4, a risk for me would be that um, it could be in danger of either getting mated or being uh, far away from the center in some sort of endgame. Uh, and now that's kind of coming to fruition. Knight to g3, bishop to g5, knight to e4, rook to d5, knight to f2, rook e5, and luckily we repeated uh, as I was really concerned about uh, just some sort of trap here trying to go for me. Of course, don't take this pawn. Uh, we will get mated on h1, so it's ill-advised. So 
that uh, that ended up being the game with the repetition. So I ended up not being able to win it, uh, but this was a pretty even fight, uh, if I'm being totally honest, because although um, felt like I was pushing in that ending, I also did not have a great opening, so I was lucky to get out of that unscathed. And that's it for game number three. I'm now two and a half out of three for this event, which is a very good score. Plus two is very, very good. And I will see you guys in game number four. Have a good one. Bye-bye.